So here is our second attempt. In this case, we don't have car star word lower. We say car word lower, which is an array of characters and it is suitably long. Remember that the original word has a certain length and there is a uh, helper function strlen declared in string.h which will calculate how many letters the given word has. That strlen function does not count the null character at the end of that word and that is why we have plus one. So this particular syntax is the syntax we use to declare what is called a variable length array. Now that name is a little bit confusing. Uh, perhaps when you first hear the term variable length array, you might think, well, that means this array can grow and shrink as I need. It's variable in length. But that's not actually what it means. We have seen earlier syntax where the value we put inside the square brackets when we are declaring an array variable, that va value is a constant. So that's called a constant length array. The only difference is that at this point in the code, we can calculate how long the given uh, word is and we can do some other calculations. So that answer that we get is not a fixed number like let us say five, it is variable. It depends on the values of other uh, variables at the time when we reach this point in the code. But once we have calculated this amount, we allocate that amount of space and from that point on the array is fixed. You then cannot grow and shrink it. So this term variable length array actually just means that it's going to have a size which I cannot predict at compile time but when the code executes, when I reach this point in time, at that point there will be some fixed amount of space that I will need please allocate that amount of space. Now I have previously hinted to you that there are really two parts of memory. This particular array is going to be allocated on the stack along with every other local variable. There's another part of memory called the heap which we will take a look at very shortly. So far none of the variables that we have seen belong on the heap. Everything is on the stack. So this variable length array is also on the stack. Now remember this is merely allocating this array. The values inside that are uninitialized. So now we have a while loop that goes through each index i and if the original word at that index is an uppercase letter then the uh, value at index i in word lower is that original letter plus this difference and that will create the lower case version of that letter. But now we also need an else case. So if it's not an uppercase letter then basically make a copy of it in the lower case version of the word. So hopefully this will work. After we have uh, gone through this we can then compare the lowercase version with color and everything else. Now if we try to execute this code on Python Tutor it will actually fail. Unfortunately Python Tutor does not visualize for us uh, the contents of variable length arrays. This is one of the limitations of Python Tutor when it's dealing with C code. So since Python Tutor does not visualize this for you, let me show you what will actually be happening. So at the time when we create this variable length array, uh, word of course has length 5. There are 5 letters in word. So the original string length of word is 5 and so this will create an array of length 6 where initially everything is uninitialized. So following Python Tutor, I'm putting question marks at each of those locations. Remember, actually there is some value over there. It's just that we don't know what that value is. So now let us uh, pretend to be Python Tutor. We initialize i equal to 0. Is word 0 not equal to the null character. Well, word zero is capital C and that is different from the null character. So we will go into 
the body of the while loop. Now the letter at index 0 is between uppercase A and uppercase Z. So we will go into this if condition and we are saying word lower of 0 should be word of 0 plus this amount. So this will convert this uppercase C into a lowercase c and put that value in this index position. Then we will come here, we will increase the value of i, so i will now be 1, we will be looking at this. This letter is of course not between uppercase A and uppercase Z, so we will simply copy it from this location to this location. And then similarly for the L and the O and the R. At this point, we have done index 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. We will increase i from 4 to 5 and we will come back here and we'll ask is word square bracket 5 not equal to the null character? Well in the original string this is index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is index 5 and word square bracket 5 is the null character. So this loop will exit. And then we will try and do strcmp with this array and color. Now can you see the problem? We didn't copy the null character. So what is over here? Well, it depends. It could be the null character, but it could be something else. As a programmer, I have no control over what is going to be at that location. Now, if you actually wrote this buggy code on a computer and you ran it, it might actually work. If you are very, very unlucky, the value at that location will be the null character and your code will run and you might think that your code is correct. If you were lucky, the value at that location will be some garbage value and your code might produce some unexpected behavior or it might crash and then you have a chance of detecting this very, very subtle mistake. Luckily for us, Python Tutor looks out for such errors. If you try to run this code on Python Tutor, it doesn't actually visualize this uh, variable length array, but it does catch this error. It stops you here and it says at this point you're trying to do an if condition, but you're trying to do a comparison with one of those special question mark values, which is not just for display purposes, but also in this case to catch us in case we try and do some operation involving uninitialized values. So Python Tutor can be very helpful to us as we learn C programming. So this approach is incorrect, but fortunately there's an easy way to fix it. Remember that when this while loop finishes, in this case the value of i is 5. In general, the value of i will be the index of this last location. So after this while loop, we simply have to write a null character at that location. So let's do that now. 